All right. I think nobody is answering my question, but I'll talk some more and then we will dive into uh, today's presentation. Now, I would like to say that forest is not a gambling business. Okay, we don't gamble when we are into forest. Forest is a business. And until you see forest as a business, you will not make it in forest. You always continue to, uh, to lose money. Once you have decided to gamble with the forest market, you are definitely going to lose money. So as a trader, you have to make up your mind that this is a business and I have to take this as such. Anything different from you taking this as a business, you are not going to be successful. You become successful in a day and in the second day, you become hot, unsuccessful. That is what happens to what gamblers. They win today, tomorrow, they lose everything that they've won. So in the forest trading or in the forest business, we take it as a business. We see it as a business. We don't see it as a gamble. I hope we are, we are getting what I'm trying to put across or we are following what I'm trying to say. This is very important. It's very important for you. That is why in forest, you need to do what we call proper planning. You need to do what we call proper planning. In every aspect of your life, there should be a proper planning. The same applies to what? To the forest trading also. You have to what? Do what we call proper what? Planning. If you don't plan in life, then you should be ready to what? To fail. The same applies to forest. If you don't plan in forest trading, you should be ready to what? To fail in whatsoever you are going to do. Now, forest is also all about what we refer to as consistency. Yeah, are you consistent with your results? Are you consistent with your results? Your results and your odd, um, your results and your strategy must be odd, must match. Okay, they have to be consistent. You see, every strategy has an up and a, a, and a down. You will not always win. You win and you lose some. But at the end of the day, the consistency matters. So you don't start using one strategy today and tomorrow because of just one loss, you stop using it and say it is no longer working. That is wrong. Once you begin to do that, you will not master any strategy. I have a lot of strategies that I'll be teaching you and be putting on our YouTube channel as well. The name of our YouTube channel is Echo Mindset. So you can go to YouTube and subscribe to our uh, channel, Echo Mindset, because we'll be posting all videos that we'll be doing on free webinar to that channel so that I can always assess them from there. So you can subscribe to that channel and then you be able to access all our materials from there. So I hope we understand this short uh, introduction. Now let's dive into business. So the first session that we will look at is talking about what? Support and what? Resistance. Support and resistance. and I know a lot of you know how to uh, draw support and resistance, but then it's important to know how somebody also look at support and resistance levels. What is their ideology about it, okay? But before then, the question is what is support and what is resistance? Why are they important? Why do we use them? Now, in the forest market, one thing you have to know is that the market is all about supplying and demand, okay? It's all about buyers and sellers. So if I don't have any good to buy, or if I come and your goods are finished, what am I going to buy? I'm not going to buy anything. And if I come and there are excess goods, okay? And there are no buyers, and you you chose to what? To increase your, what, your uh, price, at the end of the day, the person who is coming to buy has no uh, uh, no choice than to what to walk away because he knows that there are hot the 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 goods are hot are excess and if he doesn't buy and you don't also sell the goods will end up getting spoiled so the the person will decide to in, uh, decrease the hot the price and then thereby lowering the price of that commodity and then buyers will be able to what to buy that product out of the, of the market. What am I trying to say? 
at resistance levels, we ought, we sell. Why do we sell? At support levels, we buy. Why do we buy? These are questions you answer in this session, which is the session one of this presentation. I hope uh, you guys are getting me. Okay, somebody said you cannot see the screen well. So, um, uh, I hope you can see now. Please just a minute, let me work on this thing to be sure that all of you can see the screen very well. Oh, please, can we all see the screen now? Please let me know if you can all see the screen very well now. If you can all see the screen very well now, please let me know in the chat box. If you can all see the screen very well. Sure, we'll be going live in the MetaTrader, but before we go live in the MetaTrader, I want you to understand uh, certain points that is why i'm presenting on powerpoint after that we'll go live all right so please bear with me you will go live right now thank you so now let's continue as i was explaining let's go to the next point all right so as i was saying first we need to know what support and resistance lines are and what they do why are they important why do we use them okay so you should know that at all support and resistance lines. Please, who is uh, writing on the screen? Kindly clean it. Please kindly clean uh, the drawing on the screen. So support and resistance lines indicate likely ends of trend. So normally a trend will end at a support or a resistance level. Okay, a trend will end at the support or a resistance level. Why do trends end over there? Okay, that is the question. Another question you need to ask yourself why trends tend to end at what support and resistance levels? It's because at these levels, there is an inability to what to surpass the what the previous highs of what of the market. No, you should know that these highs that we are talking about are levels where. Uh, the market has previously hot, went to pick orders, but then did not finish picking all the orders there. So there were some amount of orders left at that session. Now the market has what we call memory. So the market intends comes back to pick those orders. Please, sir, okay? sorry the to market comes back to Please, pick those orders. Must, now when it gets there point. and there are orders, the market will not move past that zone. So we say at that zone the market is not able to or to surpass that particular zone where those orders are so it has to pick that order and then reverse and same applies to the support 
when they go there, they pick the buy orders over there and then they, they bounce back out. When there is a zone where there is no order, price breaks out. Okay, and there are zones that are support and they rather tends to become a resistance after a breakout. Please, sorry, I, I was muting. I was, I was trying to find those who are disturbed so I can mute them all. All right, thank you. Please, if you have any question, you um, just type in the chat box. I'll respond to you, okay? So I've muted everybody. When uh, I'm done with the presentation, I'll unmute you so that you can ask questions. Thank you very much. All right, so as I was saying, this is support and resistance we are dealing with, and it comes at every level. As you can see from these labels over here, you realize that at this level, we are looking at what? A resistance. At this level, when price got back, okay, price, price bounced down over here, and then it what? It consolidated, it did a false breakout, and what? Bounced back, met a resistance here, dropped, and bounced back up again, met a resistance here, and dropped before breaking out finally, okay? All right. So now, support is also this level below over here, okay? Support is the level below over here where price is sitting right now. So at that level, price was not able, okay, to break the force that was here. So price bounced back up till it met, uh, it met another force, which we are referring to here as the resistance, okay? And then it, thought it bounced back right down to this session. Now, this support we are seeing here, later tend to become what a resistance at this level okay so one thing that was previously a support here became a resistance at this level and this level here was what was once a resistance level but at this portion here sorry at this portion here became what a support level became a support level which was a resistance here became what a support level here let me clean this from the chart so that all right thank you now let me show you further illustration so over here you can see you can see that we have a chart okay a chart over here like how when we go to the live chat right now, you will see it. We have various levels of what? Rejection. So these levels of rejections represent what? Resistance and support. Some are were previous resistance that has tend to what? To support. For instance, at the top here, we have what? A resistance, okay? Over here at the top, this level what, is a resistance because price was not able to what, break above that level. Because price was not able to what, break about, above that level, it became what, a resistance. In other words, some people will say a supply, a supply level. Because at that time, we will be looking to what, so the next time market moves to that session, we will be looking to what, to sell that market. Why? Because we are at a level where the price is high and the sellers are not willing to, what, to push price higher than, what, than that level. And at the down here, we have what this supply stroke resistance line. Once a supply at this session, and later a demand. Okay, once a supply, and also what a demand. So when I say supply, I'm referring to what support. So at this session over here, it was what it was a support. At this session over here, it was what? It was a support. And then when we got to this, after price broke down and formed another support over here,
price went back up but couldn't break this line so this became what a resistance please i hope we are getting it and then price came back down to this support but because others are no longer in this session price broke down before bouncing back but couldn't hurt break this level so price would push down causing this level to become hot a resistance so in this case people some people chose to call this um a proving resistance or support some also said support 10 resistance resistance 10 support okay everybody has his or her own ways of what of naming it all right so let's quickly uh, go on let me clean the chat. All right. So over here, you realize that I've demonstrated some few things here. When you are in the market and you are trading your support and resistance levels, at every resistance level, you'll be looking toward to sell the market. And at every support level, you'll be looking to what to buy the market so you can realize from this chart that anytime price got to the resistance level price bounces back to the downside so anytime price got to this resistance level resistance one and resistance two price what price bounced back to what to the support level so over here people some people choose to what to place limit orders like sell stop uh, sell limit and all those stuff some also choose to sell immediately they see confirmation using candlestick patterns and some other chart patterns which we will talk about in future webinar okay please we have about four minutes more once this call ends just click on the same link and we continue from there just click on the same link and we continue from there all right so at the support level we are looking to buy the market so anytime the market is at the support level we are looking to what to buy that market you see when it is a support level don't even think about what about selling that market don't think about what about selling that market all you need to think about is buying at what support and what selling at what resistance so we sell at resistance and we buy at what at support all right so this video will be made available on our youtube channel so there is there is no need to panic if you don't understand anything now you have the opportunity to what to watch this video over again so we have three minutes before uh, we re-log on if you have any uh question i'm going to um you just raise your hand and then or you type in the chat box and then i'll respond to it after that we will log on then we'll go to the live chat and we will demonstrate uh, whatsoever I've spoken about right now, we will demonstrate it there. So within this three minutes, please, if you have any question, just raise up your hand and I'll unmute you. Or you can type your question in the chat box and I'll answer you. Thank you very much. Otherwise, I will stop this meeting and quickly refresh the link for us to continue. All right, so I think nobody have any questions. So uh, please, let's re-log. Okay, uh, what somebody has raised up his hand. I think that is Waxman. So Waxman, you can unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Hey, how are you doing? Okay, somebody say, how, how do I identify support and resistance? Somebody to say, what time frame is the best to check support and resistance so please once we log back on that is what i'm going to show you on the live chat you are going to see how we identify the support and resistance and also you will see how we are going to what we are going to draw them and which time frame to use okay all right so waxman please if you have any question kindly ask before the we log off 
Okay, see how are you doing? Say, I hope you can hear me. You can hear me very well. All right. So, please let's quickly log back on. Okay, let's go back to the page and click on the link again.